Hello everybody. Um, unfortunately, we have some problems with the projector at the moment, um, so you can't see my slides, but I try to explain as good as possible what, what you should see in, if everything <laughs> would work. Um, so yeah, um, as I was already introduced, uh, my name is Bjorn Schiesle. Um, I'm active in free software for more than 20 years now um, and working on this next cloud um, technology for more than six years. And two and a half years ago, co-founded Nextcloud together um, with my colleagues. Um, so I want to start with a quick introduction and look a little bit into the past, um, how all the internet and all the network stuff from start at the beginning. And if you look back at the 10, 20 years ago, the internet was completely decentralized. This was totally normal that um, the World Wide Web, everybody could set up his own web server, run his home page, email, Usenet, everything we used back then was completely decentralized. And it was completely normal that everybody could set up his own presence somewhere in the internet and connect with others and sh exchange and share their data. And during the years we saw a shift here because um, these days, if you look how, how the internet works and what services people usually use um, most of the time, are uh, a few, two to three um, services um, which create huge data silos um, where people upload all the data, share their data, where they communicate with each other. But it's no longer really um, this decentralized and connected how it used to be. These days you can probably count it on one hand how many services are out there which are probably 99% of the population uses for their daily work, exchanging files, um, communication. And it's not only that um, this puts all the data in one place, which as such, as such is already something critical because you also have to ask um, where are these data? Um, if, Today everybody talks about the cloud, but what is the cloud? Um, where are the data stored? In which country? If I have any issues with it, to which, um, which laws applies to, to it? Um, who has access to the data? If I click on, on a button to delete the file, are they really deleted? If I share it with my friend, are they really only accessible to my friend? So there are a lot of questions um, which came up here. And also, it's not only these questions about um, who has access to the data and where they are stored, but also, uh, if you look at communication and collaboration, it all the service creates some kind of wallet garden. So if you, as long as you use the service, they are really nice, they work, they provide you all the features you are, want to have. But um, as soon as you try to, to connect with someone outside of this wallet garden who uses a different service, it's really hard or even impossible. And it's also really hard if you decide at some point, okay, I want to switch from service A to service B to really get your data somehow out. So that's how the, the internet, unfortunately, to a large extent for most users looks today. And I think to solve this, we need three ingredients, basically. The one thing is um, we need to make it possible again to people to self-host their infrastructure. So that um, we get back to this more decentralized way, it needs to be possible that like in the old days where everybody could set up his own home page or his own mail server, everybody should also be able to set up his own cloud platform to collaborate on files or his own communication platform. And of course, not everybody has to be a technical person who really runs his own servers, but you can also if you have the general possibility to self-host, then you can also imagine that there are a huge band bandwidth of different providers you can choose from, and or you can group together with your friends, with your sports club, whatever, and there's one person who might be able to host it. But in order to decentralize the, the internet again, I think it's important that you can take the software and put it on the place where you want it and, and host it there. And another important point, I think, um, is that it's built on open standards and it's an interoperable as possible because um, if you want to self-host your stuff, of course, you still want to work together with people. So you need to have a way to, to, in, to connect these different services and also to, to move from one service to another. And a um, third ingredient, I think, is important in order to use the to be able to self-host it and to have this interoperability and to move data around, I think it's important that the stuff is free software. I think I don't have to tell this, this audience here. I think we are in FOSTEM. Everybody knows about free software and how important, important it is. But I think that's the, the three ingredients um, in order to make the internet and the services on top, again, more free and decentralized. And that's exactly what we at Nextcloud are um, providing. 
Um, if you look at Nextcloud, what it actually provides, so I, in my slide I call it the DNA of Nextcloud. Nextcloud is 100% um, free software. There is no proprietary, no non-free component. There is no open core, no um, enterprise versions which um, restricts the user. It's completely free software. All the server components are licensed under the new HGPL, and the clients for desktop, mobiles, and so on are licensed under GPL. We base Nextcloud as much as possible on open standards. Whenever a standard exists there, we reuse it. For example, with WebDAV for file exchange, we use CalDAV and CARDAV to exchange calendar and address books. Um, we collaborate with a lot of universities in Europe here to create something which is called federated sharing, which I came back to later, which also creates an open standard to exchange data across Nextcloud servers. Of course, you can Nextcloud self-host as you want or you can choose a provider. There is a huge list of providers out there, so if you say, okay, maybe running my own server is not exactly what I want, you can also choose the provider you want. And as I said, with this federation, we also work really hard to connect this um, cloud. So Nextcloud started out, if you look at the history, uh, as a file sync and share solution. So if you start Nextcloud, it looks quite similar to what you are used to from Dropbox or Google Drive or something. You just have, you have your file list, you can upload files there, you can share these files with others. We have sync clients for, for the desktop, for mobile device, so that you can easily access your files. You can, um, on a mobile phone, you have stuff like instant upload, so you, instead of uploading your picture, you just talk to, to Google or to Apple. You can upload them to the next cloud, and you know where your pictures are actually stored. And that's how next cloud was set up. But of course, um, this now looks sounds everything great. Uh, you can set up your own Nextcloud, your own file hosting, and share your files and work with it. But of course, this also comes with a big drawback. And the drawback is, um, if many people set up this Nextcloud, this means that um, we create many small islands. As long as all the people you want to collaborate with are on the same Nextcloud instance, it's still fine. Then you can share with the people there, work together with them on documents and, and so on. But what happens if you want to collaborate now with someone who has his own Nextcloud set up somewhere else? Or you are in, at University A and have there your project and you collaborate with University B, which has his own Nextcloud, and you want to work on a project together and want to exchange files, right? And everybody is on his own island, and it's a bit hard to um, collaborate with each other. And that's where we invented the uh, um, uh, idea of federated cloud sharing. This allows you to create a bridge, basically, from one next cloud to another. And to do this, um, every user on a next cloud server has uh, something we call a federated cloud ID, which basically looks quite similar to an email address. It's basically user at and then the next cloud server where the user is located. And with this federated cloud ID, you can put a name into the share dialog as easy as a f name from a local person. And the share will, be, will send a REST request to the other server and tell the other server, hey, on this server A, there is someone who wants to share a file with you. Do you want to accept it or not? And if the user on server B, des B decides to accept this file, um, we create a WebDAV mount and mount the file from server A to server B. So that's completely transparent for the user. The user doesn't even really know if the file comes from a local user or from an external user. Also, this WebDAV mount later gets then synced with your, um, with your desktop client, your mobile file client will exact the file, so like it would be lo local file, so it's completely transparent for the user, and it allows you to create these bridges from one next cloud to another. So I think that's a really important concept in order to keep the freedom to self-host, to run your own service, to know where your data are, but still have the possibility to collaborate with the other people around you. And next cloud, um, as I said, we started out with, with files. This was always on the core of Nextcloud, but Nextcloud is not just the files for files. Nextcloud um, is these days um, a huge platform for a lot of apps. At the moment, we have 200, more than 200 apps in the Nextcloud App Store. And you can not only share your files there, but you can do a lot in Nextcloud more. For example, we have a calendar app where people can have their calendars, also share their calendars with their family members, with their friends, send appointments to someone else, and, and so on. Um, we have a contacts app where people can manage their address books. We have, um, with Collabora Online and Only Office, we have two um, office solutions where people can really in the browser um, edit their documents, like they are used to from, for example, Google Docs. 
So you, if you upload it there, your, your Office document, you don't have to download it in order to work on it, but you can do it directly in the browser. Um, we have Nextcloud Talk, which is a communication platform where you can do chat um, with other people and have also video and audio calls. And of course, all this is also stuff which, which um, you not only want to do on your instance, but you also want to do um, federated between different Nextcloud instances. Um, so that's also a point where we continue to work on, um, we, as I tried to um, explain, this federated sharing at the beginning also started out in, out in, the, in the files area where we um, allowed people to collaborate on files across um, different Nextcloud servers. But with this Open Cloud Mesh initiative, which I mentioned quickly early, which is an initiative about, uh, across um, all universities across Europe, basically, we all felt that there is a need for, for decentralized cloud storage and still a way for the universe to collaborate with each other. So with this standard, which we use at the moment for file sharing, we will in the future also be able to do federated calendar sharing, federated address books, and federated calls and, and, and chat. And that's actually something we're working at the moment. So I expect that if I'm allowed to be here one year late, uh, next year in the next FOSDEM, I probably can show you um, federated calendar and address book sharing, um, how this works. And so that's um, all about um, com giving people the, the tools in the hand to stay in control over their data and communicate with each other and still be able to collaborate without losing access to, to um, without losing control over their data. And then there is one um, really new feature in Nextcloud, um, which was just announced with Nextcloud 15 uh, about one month ago, and that's Nextcloud Social. I don't know, does anybody already heard about Nextcloud Social? Okay, a few people. Nextcloud Social is based on ActivityPub. Some of you might know from uh, Mastodon and PixelFed and similar solutions. And this is um, completely Mastodon compatible, so you can, um, every Nextcloud user with Nextcloud 15 is basically, if you enables the app, also a participant in this uh, huge, huge Fediverse with um, federated social networks, can also send their status messages, can connect to other people on some Mastodon server, can connect, they can connect back. So we can also have the social interaction um, across servers with Nextcloud. And as I said, it's an act based on ActivityPub, so it's compatible with Mastodon, Pl Pleroma, Friendica, and PixelFed. We also plan in the future to implement the Mastodon client API so that you can use all the Mastodon clients um, directly to connect to your Nextcloud and, and use also on your mobile device this social feature. And some of you might now ask, yeah, why should we do Nextcloud Social? Or why do you do, try to do a feder push a federated network into a social network into a um, file sync and share solution? I think that's, um, if you look at a, big, at a broader picture, I think files are always somehow, especially in a business environment, but also in education, files are at the heart of your interaction because you have your documents there, your presentations whatsoever. But people don't only want to store their data there and then sync it to a device, but they really want to work with the data. They really want to collaborate. For example, I want to work with my colleague on a document, and then I can open Nextcloud Talk and chat with people while adding this document. Or I can call them quickly, and we can have directly um, on the one side our document, on the other side we have the, chat, the, the call with a video call and discuss the project. And I think in the same se sense, people are also used to use um, social networks this way. Um, everybody who worked at a, at a bigger company knows, knows that every big company these days has some kind of internal um, social network um, to use within a company. And this will be also um, possible with, with Nextcloud Social. So also the admin can, for example, decide that if I run Nextcloud in my company, I only use this as an internal social network to let my um, employees communicate over this network and, and exchange data, uh, exchange ideas, comment on stuff, directly attach files to it so that it's all one, one, um, in one um, nicely integrated way, everything together. Or, of course, you say you keep the next net, net network open and also connect to other people, or you can have a mixture of, mixture, mixture of both. For example, you can say, okay, most employees will use it as an internal communication tool, um, but the marketing department can also connect to people outside and push their messages out there. So I think for 
rich um, collaboration platform in 2019 and in the future, it's important to do more than more files. And if you look at a typical um, company set up, this includes these days also real-time communication, social networking. So I think this fits all nicely together. And it's really sad that you can't see my slides because I had a nice screenshot to, so to, that you could have seen how this is really nicely integrated and work together. Of course, that it's a bit, um, yeah, not so easy if I just can talk about it. But um, if you want to see more of this, um, feel free to come over to our booth after the talk in the K building. Um, there we have some demo PCs where you can also try it out, have a look at it. And yeah, that's already almost the end of my, my talk. Um, as a summary, um, next cloud is 100% um, free software and open source. There is no hidden components. Um, it's a, on its heart a file sync and share solution, but it's becomes more and more a platform for, for a rich app ecosystem um, and really the federation is a really core part of it because we believe in order to allow people to get back in control of the data we still need to, to give them ways to connect with other people. And yeah, so if you um, want to join us, of course, um, Nextcloud is a, is a huge community effort um, at nextcloud.com slash contribute. You can find many ways to get engaged, to, to join the community, to help us. Um, or you, as I said before, just come after the talk down to our um, booth and chat with us, have a look at Nextcloud, um, how these new features work, how they are integrated nicely. Yeah, that's um, the end of my, my talk, so I'm happy to take questions. Uh, thank you. I do have one question. Uh, do you hire? Yeah, we are also... Um, I, I'm are, sorry, I'm such a huge fan. So. <laughs> no, we are, we are a growing company, actually, behind Nextcloud, and we're always looking for talented people in all areas. So if you think you're also on a, not only on a community basis, but also as an employee, you want to get involved, and just reach out to us. Okay, uh, there are a few questions, so again, please stay seat until the, the, the end of the questions. Uh, please raise your hand. Sorry? Could you please light the So someone asks for oh. No problem. You are enlightened now. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, you started off the talk um, talking about data ownership and a user choosing the own instance of Nextcloud to use, which I think was very important uh, elements. Um, recently, I found out actually, or maybe I missed something, that it's quite difficult to move a user from one Nextcloud to the other instance. Um, did, I, did I miss anything, or are there plans to improve that process? Yeah, you are right. At, at the moment, um, if you want to move from one instance to another, of course, you can take the sync client, download all the files, upload them again, but it could be way more convenient. And actually, um, we are also looking into this, especially this area, to improve user migration, to allow easier migration user from server A to server B. So this is something which might most likely improve in the future, because I completely agree that this is a missing gap. Thank you. Um, you mentioned your app store earlier. Do you do anything to... Uh, manage the possibility of malicious apps being contributed or limit their impact? Um, yeah, we have um, some, some measurements um, in place, actually. So um, if someone up, uh, uploads an app for the first time, he gets a certificate, which is used to sign the app. So this way we make sure that no one else can upload an update of the app, but only the, the person who did the initial release. So we cover this point that nobody can hijack somehow the account and, and upload a malicious version of the app. Um, we also have um, checks in, in when, when an app, app gets uploaded that it only uses public APIs and no internal APIs. So there are some, some checks in place. And then are also apps are, which are additionally reviewed by us are um, labeled as official. So you know they are more reviewed and more met, mattered. So that's our... So we try to do some stuff here to at least make the lower the risk. Yes, uh, 
Yeah, great work. And I, I was using own cloud before, before Nextcloud, and I'm using Nextcloud now. Super awesome. And uh, the, you mentioned that like the federated uh, file sharing is done via WebDAV right now. And I'm, you mentioned that cal calendars are coming. Is that going to reuse the existing like CalDAV protocols, etc.? And the chat things are they reusing, or are they or are they inventing new protocols? That, that's a good question. Um, actually, the, the chat component was something we planned for, for quite some time, and also there was a lot of discussion before we actually implemented because, as I said, we always try, always try to reuse existing standards out there. And, and when we, before we started developing it, we looked into XMPP, for example. We looked also into Matrix. We also was in contact with the Matrix developers, for example. But for us, besides using the this, this standards, it's also super important that to keep it easy. We want that someone can download this Nextcloud tarball, extract it to a web route, and it runs. And that's the challenging thing. If you do it with XMPP, you need to have an XMPP server somewhere set up with tweaking your DNS settings and stuff like this. Also, the Matrix guy told us implementing client is super easy, but don't try to implement a server. So at the end, we decided, OK, we do our own implementation because we just want to get this, get this moving forward. And, but now we also explore ideas if we can create some bridges to the existing networks and maybe interconnect them. So that's the current state. OK, time's up. So uh, thank you for your talk. Thank you. Thank you.